Hey y'all, Data Guy and the Data Dog here today to talk to you and make a video about how you can collect and visualize your open lineage data uh, information so that you can start to use open lineage to generate lineage graphs through tools like Marquez or on other lineage visualization tools and get a full 360 view of data as it moves through the various steps and processes within your data pipelines. To kind of crystallize this, what I'm going to do is show you how to set it up in Airflow. Now that Airflow has an open lineage integration at the core, all you need to do to enable open lineage collection um, of the data that's coming through Airflow is just turning on a simple flag and making sure you're doing a few things in your DAGs. And then I'm going to show you how you could pipe that out to a backend, um, an open lineage backend, and then use that data to be visualized in something in a tool like Marquez or in the tool I'm going to show you. Astro Observe, which is visual lineage visualization tool designed around Airflow. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna talk about open lineage quick primer on what it is, why it's useful, and then get right into the functional stuff on how you can start extracting lineage from your Airflow pipelines. So up on the screen, I have pretty basic architecture of how lineage works. Um, and essentially what open lineage is doing is it's the process of tracking and visualizing the flow of your data through these various producer systems. So Spark, Pandas, DBT, Airflow, from its origins, the raw data files that come in, to the various steps of the transformations, to wherever the final destination or consumer is or within that data ecosystem. And this will provide a detailed map of how your data is moving across your systems, what you can see in this kind of, mar in this Marquez tool, where you see it actually is really, hey, I have two data sets that are then combined in an operation to produce another data set, which is then transformed or cleaned to produce one final data set. Um, and obviously this is a simple example, but lineage's real benefits come when you're dealing with more complex examples like this, and you really can get a full view of every single process that's happening within your data, within a single pane of glass, and then have links to go in and check, hey, is this process run properly? Has there been any degradation in quality of the data? Um, all, again, from that single pane of glass. Um, and this is really helpful and, and really crucial, honestly, nowadays for, for a few different reasons. Um, number one, helping your central team understand the dependencies between different systems, different teams, um, identifying and catching data quality issues early, uh, and then thus also ensuring date regulatory requirements and being able to troubleshoot errors more efficiently because you have a single source of truth to detect failures from. Um, and with clear lineage, if you have set it up properly, you can really have full trust in your data, have a much more streamlined debugging process than if you didn't have lineage enabled, and also because your data is of a better quality, you are more confident in its capabilities, you have better reliability and better transparency with data-driven decision making. And then also for data engineering specifically, Data lineage really helps to support having a you know robust and easy to use ETL pipeline management system, and also helps promote better collaboration across teams because it gives a central team kind of an interlinking mesh with which to define and detect the relationships and how different teams are consuming each other, um, which is really crucial if you're trying to go down the data mesh approach. And so ever since Airflow 2.7, you actually don't need to have any change in your DAG file to collect the information needed to create those graphs like that. Um, just by nature of it being an Airflow task, Airflow is now collecting and storing the lineage data kind of in tandem with its data set system. So now when you have an outlet data set, you can collect the lineage on how that data set was updated, when it was less updated, what operation changed that data set, and then have it all visualized. And all you need to do is set up this transport configuration. And don't worry, I'm gonna go into VS Code and set this all up for you, but it's really easy to get set up and use. So let's get in and show you actually how to do that. Um, so we'll switch over to VS Code. So now here within Airflow, um, this is just an Airflow Docker image I've set up using the Astronomer CLI. If you're looking for information on that, I have many videos on how to do that. Um, but essentially all I wanna do here to actually get set up. So first, what you're gonna do is go to the, your requirements file add this open lineage Airflow library to your requirements file. Um, if you're using Astro Runtime, it's installed by default, so I actually don't need this in my runtime file. Um, and what this will do is bring in the default set of extractors that are present within from lineage. So 
basically everything that supports lineage out of the box will work with this. Um, if you want to create your own custom extractors, what you'll do is add those extractors to the include directory of this, uh, and just put it in this folder. And then in your environment file, add a path to your different extractor classes if you have your own custom lineage extractors you want to implement. But most providers will come uh, with lineage already enabled and baked into it, so you shouldn't have to do this very often. Um, and then I'll just save this requirements file so it's empty. Um, and that's really all you need to do to get set up. Now, to actually have DAGs that produce and consume data sets, what you're going to want to mm -hmm. have is make sure that your DAGs have something like this outlets. Um, this will show within whatever lineage visualization tool you're using that this task or this DAG produced an outlet data set. Um, and so this is how you're actually kind of generating the lineage for a data set, even though it's not directly linked to this output. In Airflow's eyes and in the eyes of lineage, this is where it'll track changes. So if you detect a change in this data set, you can go view and look at the logs that act of the task that actually caused the change to that data set. Um, so it's kind of an abstraction, but it does provide a link for you to troubleshoot and see exactly what that task or that data set update was that caused that change. Then, if you want to have a DAG that is based off of, you know, you want to see, hey, the lineage of what's triggering another DAG, you're going to want to make sure that you have this either a schedule defined here, so schedule, and then we can just actually copy and paste this data set just for the sake of convenience. So something like this. And then what this would cause is whenever this data set object is updated, this DAG will be triggered, but then it also will collect the lineage and say, hey, this is the change to this current Air astronauts data set that caused this update in this change. So again, another way to link it. Then another way to collect lineage and detect and kind of link two different tasks or DAGs and lineage is by also setting an inlets. And this is similar to how you set outlets, you can set inlets to tasks to show that this task is dependent on a previous data set and thus collect the lineage of that data set. So that's how you actually develop the linkages between your tasks. And then once you have that available and you have enabled the open lineage, uh, you, know, you have your open lineage requirement installed, you then need to add a place to export it to. And that is where you're going to set um, an environment variable. So if I go into the environment variable here, transport, this is wherever your endpoint is for actually collecting your open lineage data. Um, you also, if you, can, uh, if you want to just see the events uh, of open lineage come in the task logs, you can go into this config dot or YAML file, actually no, not that, um, and just go into, so actually just go in here, add this transport um, type equals console. So you just replace this string with this string type console. And then instead of actually sending it to a proper backend, um, this will just push it out to the logs wherever you're viewing them um, for your Airflow environment. So you have two different options there. Um, you could also define this as a config file, but it's basically the same thing, but you just store it as a config file rather than um, within the environment file or you know, just as a variable. So that's pretty much everything you need to do to get your air environment set up for open lineage. Um, and then also um, set Make sure that if you're not seeing any lineage, there's another uh, environment variable. Maybe your environment has, or your environment has it set to false by default, but just make sure Airflow open lineage disabled is equal to false. Um, and then all of your lineage data will be sent to either the console or to that server if you defined it that way as well. Now, I'm gonna go take you over to an example endpoint, um, an example visualization tool, Astro Observe, and show you what this looks like actually visualized. So here within Astro Observe, you can see kind of an example task where or example setup where you have various DAGs that produce, you know, data sets, S3 basic data sets, ML out, model output, the various tasks that produce and evaluate models, even at, or for even machine learning models, you can collect lineage on how machine learning models are generated and predicted on. And then if I click into any of these individual tasks um, and go, it'll open the airflow logs and show me the exact task that produced or consumed a data set. You can see actually the model accuracy for this particular model that I stored. Um, so it's a really easy setup once you have all the rails in place. Uh, the fact that open lineage is now baked into core airflow makes it astronomically easier because you don't need to design your own extractors, which is definitely the hardest part of this all. Um, really now with data sets, it's kind of a snap. 
Um, so really encourage you to set up open lineage yourself, play around. If you don't want to use Astro Observe, um, there's also market. You can just go to Marquez. It's an open source setup. Maybe I'll make another video on that. No, obviously not Mark Marquez. Um, but yeah, let me know if this is interesting for you. I hope this was. Um, I think open lineage is something I'm seeing more and more come up across for enterprise uh, users. So figured it's valuable to anyone that's trying to get into that space. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.